once again asking every true Rangers fan, don't let us down. Buy our new home kit from Rangers Direct. I promise that every penny of profit will be spent reinvesting in our squad. Support your club, buy direct now. Glorious goals celebrated long and loudly by Ranger supporters. Scored by the German, who is now an honorary Scotsman, George Alberts, known to one and all as the Hammer. I just love to score goals for, for Rangers and, and for the supporters because even when you're on a pitch, you feel they live with you the game. They're just behind you, they're so exciting and you just want to give them something back and uh, I think it's a nice uh, gift that I can give them a wee bit back when I score my goals and I want to show them that I want to do that and that's why I kiss my jersey because obviously Rangers is the best club for me as well in the world. George signed for Rangers in July 1996 in a quiet close season move from SV Hamburg. The German side he'd led to fifth place in the Bundesliga and qualification for the UEFA Cup. He was 25 years old, captain of one of Germany's most famous clubs and on the fringes of the international squad. But when the call came from Ibrox to join the quest for nine in a row, he had no hesitation in answering it. I just came over here for one day to sign my contract and I saw the stadium and I saw Cameron House where I was going to stay the first three months and, and I was very impressed when I walked into the stadium. It's a beautiful stadium and uh, you just got the feeling you want to play here. If that stadium was full, it must be a great atmosphere. And then we went upstairs, we, we met David Murray and we had a few discussions and uh, I signed my contract. I done my medical and I flew back to Germany to get organised. Well, we were recommended, uh, George, by uh, a contact I have in Germany who had said to me they had been doing extremely well and uh, we were looking for a forward type midfield player and he was recommended and went over to watch him on a couple of occasions and uh, obviously was impressed by what I did see in these games and uh, I think that's been justified since uh, he came over to Scotland. this time and just knocked it inside the left hand post fine penalty Stuart Kerr guessing the wrong way good penalty from Albert and how right Walter was as the most famous left foot in Scottish football struck 47 goals in 141 appearances in his first three seasons contributing hugely to Rangers Cup and League success culminating and the glorious treble of 1998-99. George Alberts' story is an inspiring one for every young football fan, an example of what can be achieved when natural talent is combined with a fierce desire to succeed.
George Alberts was brought up in Mönchengladbach, a small, prosperous town in the heart of Germany. He belongs to a close-knit family who run a successful garage business, where he learned his trade as a car mechanic, working alongside big brother Dirk, while at the same time serving his football apprenticeship. The boys shared a passion for the game and dreamt of playing in the professional arena. Both started off at the local police sports club, the first run on the Alberts ladder to stardom. The whole family is very proud of George. You know, it's not only because of the football star George, it's in head meaning, it's because he's a very, very nice human, you know. He's a big guy for us all in family. He's the biggest friend we have. And so this way we are very proud of him. And then, sure, we are very proud because it's only the football star from Mönchengladbach, from our family, you know. That's the way. Well, what you see here now is a play from the police sports club in Germany, Mönchengladbach, where my career started when I was four years of age. Well, the thing was that I've got football shoes to Christmas from my uncle, and he was involved here, he was a coach. So obviously he invited me to his club and uh, he uh, coached me as well. So that is the place where everything started here. That, that was the reason. In the age of four years, uh, I think uh, you just kick, uh, kick the ball around here. But then when you're getting older, you want to win all the games and uh, become more professional every year. So uh, that was very good for me and I enjoyed it. But I never lost uh, fun at football. You know, that is the most important thing, I think. And, uh, I still got fun and uh, I came so far now and uh, I don't miss any minute. Well, I don't re uh, regret any minute, you know. Even at that age, he played in a winning team. We had a strong, strong team here in Mönchengladbach. We beat Borussia Mönchengladbach uh, very well in the cup finals we've got here in the youth teams and so. And uh, Well, all of a sudden the team split up here and uh, I went to Mönchengladbach uh, the following year and uh, since then I played there. But as you see, uh, it's a nice place here and I really enjoyed it here. Then when he was just eight years old, George's early promise was recognized with an invitation to join his local club, Mönchengladbach. The club boasted stars of the caliber of Lothar Matthäus and Stefan Effenberg. For the young Alberts, it was a dream come true. Well, I always wanted to be a professional. I mean, when you go Saturday, every Saturday to the games here and you see the players here, you want to be part of it or you dream about one day playing down there and that was always my dream and uh, I worked hard for it but as you said there comes a stage in, uh, in life you have to make decisions and uh, well you obviously have to go to school as well and you have to learn a job but it was always a dream for me to be a professional footballer. But after 11 years with them the boy who turned into a man living his life for the club he loved was in for a shock. Well, I was uh, in my last year in apprenticeship as a car mechanical and uh, they offered me a contract here, but uh, I had discussions with my parents and I must say thank you today for that, uh, that they told me. First of all, it's very important to have a job behind football because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow if you break a leg or something. So I finished my job and uh, I signed a contract as an amateur. And, uh, well, I finished my, my, my apprenticeship as a car mechanical and afterwards, and uh, I thought I got my chance now, but all of a sudden uh, they don't want me any longer. I said, well, I'm not good enough to be a professional, so they offered me another contract as an amateur. George had a decision to make. Did he accept the amateur contract or go into the family business? But just at that time, Fortuna Dusseldorf, who were in the first division, stepped in and offered him a full-time contract. Ten years, it's a long time here. You grew up, you had a lot of friends, but then again, uh, Dusseldorf is not that far away. So I could stay at home, still with my, with my parents, with my family. They helped me a lot as well. So I took the chance and I went every morning half an hour to Dusseldorf and in the afternoon again. So uh, I think now, when I think about it now, it was a good decision and the right decision. On his debut for the club as a substitute against Hertha Berlin, George scored one of the goals which had become his trademark. All of a sudden the, the player on my position was ill overnight, so I was in the squad and uh, he was thinking about bringing me from the start and uh, then he decided to put me on the bench, which was huge for me. I was involved in a, in a, in a big game, it was a dream 
and then in the second half he said, well, get ready, you come on now. And uh, Well, I was 10 minutes, 15 minutes in the game and I scored a goal, we won one nothing, and I was just over the moon, you know. George spent his three years at Dusseldorf accumulating the experience that would be necessary to lift him to a higher level. And inevitably, the call came from the Bundesliga in the form of SV Hamburg. Hamburg were the sleeping giants of German football, who'd experienced the ultimate glory of winning the European Cup in 1983, but had slipped into mediocrity. At 22, George Albert was about to make his contribution to Hamburg's return to the top level. We went back to Hamburg, where the stadium has been rebuilt into an impressive 50,000-seater arena for the new millennium, to rekindle the spark which ultimately led to George coming to Rangers. Well, I played uh, for Dusseldorf and we get relegated twice uh, in a row, so that meant uh, I would play amateur football. But all of a sudden, Hamburg stepped in, uh, which uh, was a surprise for me and I was uh, very honoured because it's a huge club in, 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 in Germany and was uh, in the 80s anyway. With players like Kevin Keegan and Franz Beckenbauer, they won the European Cup in the 80s as well, so that was a great honour and there was uh, no question that I want to move. The team of Hamburg knew that uh, George Albert uh, was a big talent and maybe the, the biggest talent in Germany. He increased uh, the quality of uh, the team in Hamburg and uh, that's why the, the fans, the spectators, uh, loved him very much very soon. After just two years with the club, George became captain of Hamburg at the relatively young age of 24. See, when your captain was 24, I, I was the youngest captain uh, in the Bundesliga and the youngest captain to this, in, this, in this season and uh, the youngest captain for the club anyway. So that is a great honour for me. The, the coach came to me, the gaffer here, and said, well, you're the right man for that and I want you to be ca captain. And uh, that was just a dream for me. I can lead the team out on the pitch here at the age of 24. Maybe he was the, the youngest captain there's ever been here uh, in Hamburg. But uh, the reason um, is that he had, that he had um, big qualities. Um, he was able to, to lead the team. He was uh, a person who was able to, to integrate everybody and uh, to, to make them strong and uh, to, to be optimistic. And uh, that's why he was a good captain. And he led by example, launching some of his trademark left foot rockets in the process giving birth to the name by which he's now known the Rangers supporters the world over. This expression was invented in Hamburg. He was our uh, Dr. Hammer, Mr. Hammer or Hammer Ali. Ali is the abbreviation for Alberts and uh, Ali sounds nice, you know, you know, the, the boxer. And uh, so the spectators love to, to, uh, to call his name, Ali, 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 you know, and uh, well, it was a German expression, a German ex invention, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jörg Ali Alberts. And that affection for the hammer still exists today. An instantly recognizable figure, George retains a special place in the heart of Hamburg supporters. This is a player. Yeah! Let's go! The spectators uh, were very sad because um, he was one of the best players here in the team of uh, Hamburg. Everybody was sad uh, who loved uh, the team of Hamburg, the HSV as we uh, call it. But uh, I think everybody could understand him because uh, Glasgow Rangers uh, have a sound in, in Germany and everybody knows that you can earn a lot of money there and uh, I think everybody uh, would have done the same if there would have been the chance to, um, to go there. Well, the deal started uh, that an agent, uh, Dennis Roach, come to Germany and we had the first meeting in my office. And then the next step was uh, the European Championship in England 
And I go to see a match in England with George together, and after the match we go with a private jet from the president to Glasgow, and uh, uh, I think it was a good idea to speak not about money. You know, he showed him the stadium, that was fantastic for me, the, the town and where he can live, and then we had a nice dinner together, and after the next day we talk about money, you know, and that's not usual in this job. You know? And it was also the whole feeling for George, a uh, new country, new language, you know, and that was a very, very good step for him. Hamburg to Helensburg. They may seem a million miles apart, but they're only different backdrops for the character who is George Albert. The bright city lights have their place, but he prefers the quieter surroundings of the seaside town, where he spends his time relaxing with his black Labrador, Luca. You should concentrate on your football, and uh, after you're tired, you just go home and relax, and uh, I like it more in a quiet place. Uh, of course, it's a wee bit further away from the stadium and so, but uh, I think it's worth it. I stay with my girlfriend here. I've got Luca here and uh, I've got the scenery where I can take the dog out. I can go for nice walks here, which you can't go in, in, in Glasgow City yourself. Just nice long on the water here, which I can do in Helensburg and that's what I love, you know. And if you want to have uh, some action, you can go half an hour in, in, in Glasgow anyway. But I'm not uh, that type of, type of guy. I like it more quiet, but sometimes you have to go out. And, and I'm doing that as well, of course. It's a peaceful setting in which to relive the Hammers' contributions to the Rangers' cause. I think to that stage when I arrived at, uh, in Glasgow at, at Rangers, there was a lot of uh, Scottish players involved here and they made it so easy for me. You just were a part of the team, one guy from the team from the first day on. So they made it uh, very easy for me to settle in here and that was just brilliant. We had a lot of fun together. He took to the, the Scottish way of life um, very easily. He took to the, um, uh, the, the dinners that we used to go out on now and again, he took to that comfortably as well and uh, he just enjoyed his time there and he, he loved the lads and you know, we had a good bunch of characters at the team at the time and, and he was a character in his, own, in his own right as well so he fitted in, he fitted in really well. Big George is absolutely fantastic. Um, I can honestly say out of all the foreigners that have came to, um, especially Rangers, probably Scotland as well, I think Big George is the one that has, has played with a smile on his face and, and really tried to take part, not only with everyone in the dressing room, but certainly the culture around about him. No, obviously coming from a, another country over here and, and, and fitting into our culture must have been pretty hard for him, but he's, he's adapted to that really well. Uh, as you say, Coisty, Janante and myself would probably go take him for a meal and whatever, you know, and, and have a chat with him. And, and you know, it's, it's nice to try and make the players feel welcome, regardless who they are or, or where they come from, and just try and settle in as quickly as possible. Because at the end of the day, you want Rangers to do well. But I didn't feel any pressure. All I was thinking of just play with Paul Gascoigne and, and Brian Laudrup. You can learn a lot and try to do your best, and that's the only way you can do it. George met his Ibrooks bow in Richard Goff's testimonial against Arsenal in August 1996. <laughs> His first full competitive game for the club followed in the Champions League qualifier against the Russians, Alenia Vladikavkaz. Nice touch by Alberts, he runs on to the turn from McCall. Goff swell forward here, joining the attack. In comes Goff! And Rangers get the equaliser! McKinnis scores! Well, what a European debut for McKinnis! Strike. Richard Goff had come in to attack this ball. He came in, uh, more or less did, he did well straight away because I can remember in my testimonial against Arsenal, he scored, I think, uh, I think it was the third goal and the, the, the supporters loved him straight away. And there was always a buzz about uh, George went, whenever he got the ball 30 yards out and there was always a buzz went around the stadium because I knew he knew could you know, unleash a, a great shot, which he did on uh, many occasions. He scored his first goal six games later in the League Cup against Air United at Ibrox. Then another followed in the same competition against Hibbs. 
before he notched up his first Premier League goal, also against the Easter Road side. Goes to the crowd with that one. Well, seldom have I seen a shot hit with more power than this. Look at this. Thundering it under the wall and rising all the way. Leighton had that chance. Well, that really was a collector's item, that one. Jorg Alberts enjoyed that, his second goal for Rangers. And that has brought the crowd to life again before the end. Poor Jim Leighton. The team lost 2-1. But George had left the Rangers supporters with a lasting memory. Two weeks prior, George had sampled the old firm atmosphere for the first time and made the first of his many telling contributions against Rangers' oldest and fiercest rivals. And all the Scottish players told me about the game and it's uh, the biggest game here and uh, you have to give 100%, which I do in every game, so that is not a big difference for me. But um, I thought myself, well, that must be a big, big game here. So I was really looking forward to it. And as soon as you walk out the tunnel, you run into the stadium and you see the, so, see the supporters and you hear, hear them shouting. And so you know exactly what's going to happen here. With Rangers chasing nine in a row, the games against Celtic took on an even greater significance. Mike Namara, chance here for Celtic. John Hughes is there. It's off the crossbar. The Celtic players can't believe him. Gascoigne might punish them now on the counter attack. Celtic are fit in the back. Low drop, wide for our bats. There's Gascoigne. Hammer's precisely struck passes and blasted goals ripped the heart out of the Parkhead side and put George in the record books as the hardest shot in British football, timed at an incredible 79.8 miles per hour. To be honest, I didn't see a great gap in, in the Celtic lineup at, at, at that stage, but I don't think you could have any more accurate a free kick than George's right into the bottom corner, and uh, one that was much needed, and uh, we were all pleased to see it, and it was a fantastic strike. You know, he's a terrific passer of the ball, and once a game opens up, um, he then comes into his own. Uh, he's good running with the ball, and can deliver a terrific pass once he's there, and he showed that on more than one occasion. But, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, he's a good all-round forward type midfield player, George, uh, that I think sometimes forget that he can pass really well and that's his shooting that obviously grabs the headlines. A wonderful player, great talent. Um, I think for the size of him, a lot of people would think, you know, just a big, strong player, but nothing could be further from the truth. Technically very, very gifted. As I say, a great passer of the ball. He can see things 
from a forward's point of view, if you make a run, you know, George will find you and he scores more than his fair share of goals. That was the game uh, I scored my free kick as well and uh, they came back level, one each. But uh, I've got the chance. Eric Boanerson came in as a substitute and everybody knows how quick Eric was. So I had two chances to put him through and I don't think I'm a selfish player, so I play the balls. And uh, in that occasion, that was right anyway. He's got two nice goals that won us uh, the game, which was incredible as well. Really nice memories I've got here against Celtic. That New Year's strike against Celtic came during an impressive scoring sequence of eight goals in 11 games for George. A vital contribution to nine in a row. But when the moment arrived for Rangers to finally reach that historic landmark, George was left out of the team that took to the field at Tannadice to clinch the title against Indy United. For Walter Smith, it was one of the most difficult moments of his managerial career, but a decision George took with good grace. In the away matches, I just felt that in that one in particular, that we just needed you know, a little bit more um, graft than that left Brian Lowder and Paul Gascoigne to do you know, most of the creative part of it. So uh, it was a difficult decision because I felt that George's contribution there had been as big as anybody's there. But it was a decision that we had to make and it was accepted by him, I've got to say. And uh, that is one thing about him, as long as you had a reasonable explanation for it, he always accepted, um, you know, if you were leaving him out, which in my case wasn't very often. My performance uh, at the home game against Motherwell wasn't that good. So Walter decided to give Charlie Miller a chance in the last game which was uh, very disappointed for me. But uh, as I said, that fo football as well, he has to make decisions. And for him, that was the best team at that day. And success gives him always right. And uh, Charlie Miller made a beautiful cross against Dunn United. And Brian Lauder was there with a header, unusual for him as well. And that won us uh, the championship. So after that, I was five minutes a wee bit uh, disappointed. But after that was a celebration. So I was part of the team as well, because I, I played the whole season, I played mo most games that season for, for Rangers. So I knew I, I'd done a wee bit as well to, the, to get the championship, and that makes me proud. Chairman David Murray, accompanied by Lord McFarlane, the president of United Distillers, the sponsors of the league. So nine confirmed, ten the target. And one should not underestimate the part played by David Murray. He's given Rangers so much of its financial muscle to win these honours. And one of Celtic's proud boasts over Rangers is no longer viable. The nine glorious years of championship success under Jock's team that they enjoyed has been equaled by Ibrox teams under first Graham Souness and since 1991, Walter Smith. The following season began full of optimism for the club as they began their chase for a record-breaking 10th title. Hearts were the opposition on the opening day and they were dispatched 3-1. He's got European goals already for his new club, but here he is on his Scottish league debut, and that was simply superb. Marco Negri takes the ball down, looks for options. The Champions League beckoned once again, and George opened his European account in the first qualifying round, 6-0 win at Ibrox against Gotu from the Faroes. Cross comes over, great header by Ali McCoy. 
an 11-0 aggregate win saw Rangers through to meet Gothenburg. However, a poor performance in Sweden effectively put paid to any chance of further progress on the competition. Albert scored against Strasbourg in the UEFA Cup, but once again, the team failed over the two legs. The referee takes him back 10 yards. They may be advised to go back a few yards more. Albert blasts it. It's a goal. Straight through the wall, straight underneath the goalkeeper. And George Alberts makes it 4-0 to Rangers with a terrific free kick from 20 yards out. That's his speciality. So the pursuit of the championship became the principal target. George was a vital force on the left side of midfield, scoring important goals at crucial times. Around him were a number of players whose careers at Ibrooks were drawing to a close. Walter Smith too announced that he was to leave at the end of the season. However, as long as the dream of ten in a row was alive, George had his sights firmly fixed on beating as many of the Premier League keepers as he could. This is Albert. With spectacular try success. One here. It's a good one. This is incredible stuff. It's George Alberts, the perfect answer. Two minutes later, 52 minutes gone here at Easter Road. And George Alberts, his fourth goal of the season. He got four in the five games against Hibs last year. He strikes again with awesome power here. During the first half, I went up for a for a header and I twisted my ankle a wee bit. So I went out on the sideline and I got it taped. And I thought maybe you need to get substituted here, but I wanted to play the game because it was a crucial time for us as well. nice memory again for me. It was a crossover from the right hand side of what I had one touch and it was quite a distance and I scored from there. So that was a nice memory as well. And Hibs Capital neighbours hearts, in particular their keeper, Jules Rousset, were on the receiving end of the hammer strikes on several occasions. Championship charges. Those are vital goals. Yes Albert's trying one now. That is a superb strike. And that certainly ties it all up now. Hearts one, Rangers four. 79 minutes and Rangers have the three points and Rangers go top of the league again. Ball's got to be important, and it comes to Albert for the shot. That's it. Wonderful move by Rangers. Created from deep. Wonderful interception by Cleland, and a typical German finish. He was very, very powerful. He scored a lot of goals against me. So uh, he's a very good player. Uh, left foot uh, is absolutely unbelievable. He can. Uh, 
powerful, so powerful. And uh, if it's on target, you have uh, practically no chance. Penalty kicks, I stopped uh, two of them and two with my feet, so, uh, but he, 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 he nearly broke my ankles twice, so he's dangerous man, very dangerous. Watching one of these games against Hearts in February was the man destined to take over from Walter Smith. George was to play an important part in Dick Advocat's incredible first season at Ibrox. At that stage in the season, the quest for ten in a row was still very much on. Celtic may have been setting the pace, but when it came to the crunch, Rangers upped the pressure on their great rivals with two spectacular victories in the Cup and League in the space of just one week. These are the games that George will never forget. We knew we have to beat Celtic twice to go in the final of the Cup and uh, to go through to have a chance in the Championship as well. So we went there up for the, for the semi-final and uh, we, as I said, we had a good preparation for it and uh, I think uh, we played a brilliant game over there. It was uh, a little bit snow on that night as well, I think. And uh, obviously I scored a, another goal and I set one up. The first one was to Ellen McCoy. It was a beautiful header from him. One nil to Rangers, and it's the old stager who's done it again for Walter Smith. How often has this man been the scourge of Celtic? Ali McCoy scores his 27th goal in an old firm derby. It's just the breakthrough that Rangers needed. Yeah, absolutely. There's wonderful striking from McCoy, and a wonderful cross by uh, Albers was met by the head of. And although this has not been one of Ali's best games. He showed that he's in there on merit and he's in there to score goals. Celtic's hopes of a treble on the brink of foundering at the moment. Yeah, I think we've got to say though that but for Gorham, uh, Celtic would have had a two or maybe even a three goal lead at half time. But Rangers thoroughly deserve to get a goal in the second half. And this is a great break again from Albert. Loudrup to his right, McCoy's gone through the middle. He's not going to need any of them. He's going to go all the way. A magnificent goal from Albert. <laughs> What a splendid finish to a superb run from Albert. And Rangers now surely in the final to give Walter Smith a great sign off as their manager. Took the ball from the halfway line on the left hand side. It was quite unusual. I, I ran over to the right hand side because I saw that there was a lot of space and nobody came towards me. So I saw just keep going and keep going and I come further to the goal. So uh, I went back in on the left side again to put the ball on my left foot and I passed another player and uh, another player came out and tried to tackle me and I just made a, a dummy or protected that I should so he just jumped in, a, in the emptiness there and uh, then uh, all of a sudden Jonathan Grove was in front of me I just put the, uh, the ball uh, be beside him and uh, it was a very nice goal and uh, quite funny the next game at home against Celtic as well Matjuna Stern scored a beautiful goal of volley. It was one nothing up and we needed another goal to get in front of the of Celtic again because of the goal difference. And uh, I scored quite a, a similar goal which I thought was very funny and uh, very nice for me. So I took the ball on the halfway line again and I went basically through the same stages and I scored another nice goal. With the power that he showed when he scored last Sunday. Can he go all the way again? Absolutely phenomenal for Rangers. Walter Smith raises the arms in triumph. And so does the scorer. Well, it was just inside his half this time. A little bit less he's had to come, but first he muscles somewhere out the way. Then he goes to the left. I have to say as a defender, you've got a question here. That afternoon, it had all seemed possible, but the dream of ten in a row died with defeats by Aberdeen and in the second last game of the season by Kilmarnock at Ibrox. Rangers went into their final match at Tannadice knowing that they had to win, but at the same time aware that if Celtic won on the same day, the championship would be theirs. Once again, George Alberts played for the jersey, scoring one of the two goals, but it wasn't enough. 
To add to his disappointment, he was sent off, putting him out of the cup final against Hearts the following Saturday. More than anything else, George felt a responsibility to the fact that he wasn't one of those players who had served the club for an awful lot of years and he wanted to try and make a mark of his own in terms of getting there. And I thought he had a terrific season, despite you know a lot of the disappointments that we had there. And for me, he was a big occasion player as well. And it was a terrible shame for him. I can remember of that. It was my last, uh, my last game for the club against Hearts, which was a lot, of the, a lot of the players' last game for the club. And he was suspended. He got sent off um, at Dundee United the, the week before, which was a bad blow. And I think uh, that went a long way to us not uh, winning the Scottish Cup that year. To see the team get beaten in a, in, a, in a cup as well, so we didn't achieve anything in the tenor row season. That was uh, not even a, a disappointment just for the team, for the club, even for the supporters as well. But uh, life goes on and there's always a new season and a new game and, and the next game. So you have to, to live with it. Season 97-98 was a disappointment for everyone connected with Rangers. The dawn of the Advocat era was to redress the situation in spectacular fashion. For the sixth time in Rangers history, the treble was achieved, and George Alberts made his own very special contribution. In all, he scored 19 goals, 15 in domestic competition and four in Europe. His season started impressively with a double against Shelburne in the opening game, one against Motherwell in the league, two against Alloa in the League Cup and another away from home at Kilmarnock in the league. It was just the start George wanted. He was playing a major role in the new side that Dick Advocat was building. We had obviously a new team there and the gaffer had to build from these new players a, a, a team to fit them in with the old players and uh, also he's a, an excellent coach and he knew what he was going to do there and uh, as I said uh, success always gives somebody right and you can't be more successful than they got what God was. The first leg of the treble was won against St Johnston in the League Cup final. In a dress rehearsal for the final Rangers had demolished the Perth side 7-0 on their own ground George contributing two on the night.
and just to rub it in, he proceeded to score the winner against Saints in the final at Celtic Park exactly three weeks later. He'll go for the run for Kinchelskis. The Russian is away. He can cut it back, can he? Gibos! A ball and not letting him settle at all. But that's not the kind of ball you play to Kinchelskis anyway. You've got to put it beyond the fullback. No, true, but still got a ball in that. Well, that's a beautiful play. move as Elbert comes in. Oh! You might have justifiably got for slack play up to then. And a great piece of combined play as Rangers go 2 1 up. Well, it's a great dummy initially, and Guibar just lays it into Alberts. At times, it looks as though he just does enough, and you know he can give you more. And when he does things like this, you know he is a class player. Great dummy, beautiful 1 2 with Guibar laid in perfectly for him. Defenders can't get it in time, and Alan Men can't stop it. Well, we are, we are playing football to get trophies and uh, any final you play and you score a winning goal that makes you feel proud and makes you feel uh, happy and I was quite happy that day because I scored the winner there and it was a tough game against St. John's and uh, we had them before that as well, we beat them a few times but we knew they, they, they knew us as well so they made it a very difficult time for us but uh, at least uh, I scored the winner and we won the first trophy this season in that year, so that was a nice start for us. That win was sandwiched between the two crucial UEFA Cup ties against Parma. A one-all draw at Ibrox in the first leg had set up a tense return. The game started well for Rangers, and midway through the first half, the Italians were stunned by a moment of Albert's magic. I think the defender came towards me and I, and I took him on and he passed the ball and I could caught the ball so I just went past him and he was chasing me and I was quite wide right, uh, in front of the goal but I, th I thought he might be quicker than me so he's gonna catch me up here so I took a decision and I, and I shot on, on goal and I uh, went past the keeper into the net and that brought us one nothing up and I thought, well, we've got another chance here to go through the next round. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way, as the Italians scored three in the second half. However, Rangers had shown once again that they could compete against the very best in Europe. The emphasis now was on the league and Scottish Cup and the bid for the domestic treble. And George made his now customary contributions to both, Firstly, as Rangers crushed Aberdeen 4-2 at Pataudry at the end of January. Then Hamilton Aki suffered a 6-0 St Valentine's night thrashing in the cup, before George's goal-scoring exploits hit a peak with a stunning hat-trick against Dundee at Ibrook, his first for the club. 2-0 to Rangers. Yeah, he doesn't miss many of them. That's a perfect penalty. John Hillcourt guessing. I'm guessing wrongly, and Rangers an easy street now. So it's George Alberts. Vidmar. Alberts did well to skip away from Gavin Strachan. Onto the left foot! for possession, McCann and Adamchuk, 
Lee McCann comes away with the ball. George Alberts appearing alongside him. It's in for Alberts. A chance for the hat trick. In all, George scored 19 goals in his third season in every competition in which the club he loves competed. Prepare yourself for Britain's biggest club match at Britain's biggest club ground. The lucky 60,000 inside Celtic Park at their loudest and proudest. Listen to the noise, feel the tension and experience the passion of Old Firm Derby Day. It's Celtic against Rangers. The stage was Celtic Park, as Rangers set out to clinch the league championship at the ground of their oldest rivals for the first time in the club's history. Tony Bidmark missed last week's game against Aberdeen with a leg injury. Van Bronckhorst slides it through here to Rod Waters, and it's in from McCann. And Rangers have the lead. And are they edging towards the title? Neil McCann is buried underneath his celebrating teammates. Yeah, it all came from a good early ball from George Alberts. Rod Wallace wanted it in behind and got it. And nobody picked up Neil McCann at the front post. And although he's stretching, it's well controlled. All he's trying to do is get it on target. And nobody, nobody picked up McCann's run to the front post there. A well-worked move by Rangers. And a good finish from Neil McCann. Already one up through a superb Neil McCann goal, Rangers were awarded a penalty. As ever, George took the responsibility on his shoulders and coolly slotted the ball home. I'm not quite nervous in these kind of moments. I just take the ball and I score. If I miss, well, it's a 50-50 chance anyway. So uh, uh, a lot of big names in football miss penalties and uh, that is not the biggest deal in the world. Life goes after that one as well. But I knew I'm going to score there, and I quite like the pressure on me. So I usually score when the pressure is on me. Up steps the hammer, but he doesn't hammer it. He side footed into the corner, and Rangers are closing in on the new Scottish Premier League trophy. Yeah, the perfect penalty there from George Albert. Went for precision this time, and just knocked it inside the left-hand post. Fine penalty, Stuart Kerr guessing the wrong way. Rangers on course to complete a century. A century of league victories over Celtic in this famous fixture, which goes back over 100 years. Neil McCann, McCann is through here, he's past the keeper, and Neil McCann has clinched the championship. It's 3-0, it's the magnificent McCann. Yeah, his pace really has destroyed Celtic at times tonight. And I think it's Scott Marshall who was caught on the wrong side of him here. The ball's played through, Scott Marshall tries to win it, caught on the wrong side. McCann's quick enough to knock it past Kerr and roll the ball into the net. Still a fair bit of work for him to do here as Stuart Kerr came out to close him down. And he handled it beautifully. Celtic just caught short here at the back. Scott Marshall Gamble tried to win it in front of Neil McCann, was caught. And McCann did well. Delight for Dick. That day was a special day in my life, in my football career as well, because to do that as a foreign player here in Scotland and uh, to do it the, the first time for Rangers is a very nice feeling. So. That always got to be remembered here as well. And my name is in it, that's nice. Rangers are champions of Scotland. They've reclaimed the title from Celtic. And just to rub it in, their crowning moment comes on the ground of their fierce rivals. Rangers' 100th league victory over Celtic has made them champions for the 48th time. Last season they missed out on the honours 
It was their first trophyless campaign for 12 years. They responded by spending well over £30 million pounds on a new team. A multinational, multi-talented, multi-million pound side. In 1967, Celtic clinched the title with a draw at Ibrox. 32 years on, Rangers have won it at Celtic Park. And right now, their fans probably feel that it was worth the wait. The season was to have one final flourish. Just 27 days after the league triumph, the two sides faced one another again in the first Scottish Cup final at the new Hampden Park. The history books now show that Rangers clinched the treble with a Rod Wallace goal early in the second half. Mialbi, in step D'Amato for Rangers. And Bronckhorst, Vidmar. It went away from Wallace, but it comes back to him! And Rangers are in front in the Scottish Cup final! And it's Ron Wallace! Well, who else? The man who really has lit up Rangers' season since he came north of the border. And it's played in behind Wallace there, it eventually breaks to him, sits up perfectly. Jonathan Gould exposed and left with absolutely no chance. Just sits up beautifully for him and he was never going to miss from this range. It's all over! Last season they were left with nothing. This season they have everything. It's a tremendous treble for Dick Advocat's new look, Rangers team. And it really doesn't get much better than this. Rod Wallace, the match winner. At the start of the month, they clinched the title at Celtic Park. At the end of the month, they've seen off their oh-so-fierce rivals again to claim the Scottish Cup. The Rangers, the 97-98 season wasn't too great, but 98-99 has been just fine. Beautiful stadium, which was the first time for me that I saw him, and I thought it was just spectacular. And... Uh, it was nice. It was nice to to win off the park as a winning team again, to to got the treble, and uh, I think it's it's very nice uh, that that is in the history as well, and my name is going to be there as well again. So I'm quite happy with this season. While Rangers and their supporters parted the weekend away, George was en route for his final game of the season, playing for a World Eleven and Jean-Pierre Papin's testimonial match in Paris and the Hammer took the opportunity to impress a star-studded gathering with one of the best goals seen in Europe all season. And the goals are still coming in season 99-2000. Rolls well tackled that time. Just keeps the ball in play. Michael Moles going in. Here's Moles. Turns away. Tries to get it through. And there's a gentleman with a glorious strike. All the speed work done again by Moles and just a fraction of a little break there to Alberts to slot it home and I think this puts the game beyond any possible dispute now here's his opportunity that crept up after Moles had disorientated that defense again and he kept it down low that was the main advantage here for Alberts didn't have much time to think as it was struck back towards him clean as a whistle
Scotland and Ibrox in particular is where George Albert's heart lies and he has a special place in the heart of every Rangers fan. To those who know him, he's not just a great entertainer on the pitch, but a great character of it as well. He loves it at Rangers. He, he loves being in Scotland. Uh, he actually holidayed the first year that he was there. He stayed and, and taken parts of Scotland that he maybe didn't see in his footballing travels. And he loves the country and he's even developed a bit of Scottish accent in between. I would say he's, he's a good character, you know, and uh, great desire and hunger about him to want things here, uh, and he just loves being here. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's been brilliant for Rangers, you know, he, there's a lot of foreign players came here and gone, but he's one that's, I think he's been here now for maybe four or five years, and he, and he loves the place. You know, he has taken the club to his heart, and I think the fans have been magnificent to him as well, and he realises he realizes that as well, and he tries to give them his all every week. I would say Big George, has been, it's been a pleasure having him, uh, as I say, in this country. Wonderful, wonderful player, and, and, and more importantly, a gentleman. I think he's a great lad. I think uh, he's a terrific fella. He's one of the nicest people um, that you'll meet. He has strong opinions to go along with that. Um, that that make him what he is. I think uh, he's an extremely good player and I'm just delighted that I was partly responsible for bringing him to Rangers. And I must say I'm very proud to be part of, of, uh, of Rangers Football Club and I just love uh, the supporters here and I try to do everything to give them back what they give me on match days as well. That's why I'm kissing my shirt and, and try to score as many goals for them as I can do. And uh, it's beautiful to be part of the history the club made here with the, with the travel win and uh, other histories we made here, or cups we won. And I'm just uh, happy to be part of the team now as well. Thank you. 
Support your club by direct now. Super. You can see here, I mean, he's all over him there. He manages to get away, direct play, good overstep in, tries the shot eventually. It comes off the defender, comes to the big man. And I can't give this guy enough praises. I think his attitude tonight is... Well, Michael came in, I think he, he tried to have a shot on goals and it was uh, a block and it was high in the air. And I was just, it came to, to me in my pass where I was running. And I took the chance and I took it uh, volley in the, in the back of the net. So that was a very nice feeling for me, especially my parents were in the stadium as well. My whole family was there, so it was very nice for me. Touch forward by Van Bronckhuis, that's a better ball. Albert's coming forward. Penalty kick. So, George Albert. That's it. Rangers equalise. George Alberts might well be the striker here. Here he comes. That is sensational. Uh, not only could Nick Colgan not save it, he couldn't get near it. One of the strikes of the season from Alberts. of hesitation and it's it oh! beautifully struck by Albert it had to be beautifully judged and it was and that certainly relieves the pressure for Rangers Left by Wallace for Alberts. Motherwell won't be happy with the room and the time they afforded here to Alberts. But you certainly can't criticise the finish. And that's his 12th goal of the season. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst with a real swirling corner. And Kanchowski is knocked it across. And it's in from Alberts. What a start for Rangers. They have got it in for Celtic again. Van Broncos is very, very deep. No one picking up at the back post at all. And Chelsea heads it back across goal. And Alberts has the simplest of tasks. And that's a shocking defensive goal for Celtic to lose with so many players full side of the ball. 
Now Van Bronckhorst. Oh, Van Bronckhorst has put Neil McCann in. Is this going to finish it? Albert! It's a romp for Rangers. Well, I just like to play against Celtic. I think they're the biggest uh, games uh, in the Scottish League, and we're always looking forward to them. But you need to, to play against the other teams as well. They are very important wins if you win against them. But of course, against Celtic, you know the supporters want you to do a wee bit more and, and you know how they feel. And uh, I think every player on the park tries to do a wee bit more. This season, we've done very well against Celtic, I think. And uh, that shows that, we, that we've done a, a good job this season. with the chance to create for Alberts. Brilliant goal. Five-star build-up and a blistering finish from George Alberts for his 16th goal of the season. Wilson, Ferguson, that touch from Reina was crucial. Then it was Konchelskis who squared it. And Alberts with the unstoppable shot. It's George Alberts. It's 4 2. Arena to Alberts. Three up ahead of him. He didn't need anyone else than George Alberts. His second. And Rangers fifth. Now Rosenthal. The familiar socks at half mast. And away he goes with a lovely pass. Now George Alberts to keep his way out. It's in the back of the net. What was Gordon Marshall thinking about there? A captain's role, a late run once again. The undoing of Kamarnock from the midfield, provided by George Alberts. Marshall playing. The last man and the sweeper caught out. Alberts with the easiest of opportunities. And it's Rangers leading by two goals to nil. And Alberts gets goal number 19 of the season. Kanchelskis. Reina. Albert! Oh yes! Did it go over the line? It has done now! Rod Wallace is claiming it! Albert! My fancy claiming it! It's 4-0! Well, we'll have to see the pictures again, Ian, to see whose goal this is. The standoff, Albert! Wonderful shot there! Yeah, it's over the line, it's George Albert's goal, Billy Dawson, Rod Wallace. Desperately trying to get on the end of it, trying to claim it. Superb strike from George Alberts, it's a yard over the line. But again, look at the anxiety of Dodds and Wallace to follow up. Super strike by George Alberts. And it is a total collapse now, I'm afraid. It's number 20 of a sensational season for the popular German, George Alberts. I mean, it's outstanding. I think the, the whole crowd was delighted that we have so many points in front of Celtic. And that we have four or five games before the end of the of, of the of the league, we are the champions, and it's a it's a great achievement for for the club, for the supporters, and, and for the team. So we were all delighted, and we had a great party here. from this man. Alberts calling it. Oh, that is absolutely sensational. George Alberts, just when you think he's going to hit a rocket, he delivers a little bit of craft and curl. George Alberts with a chance to give Rangers the lead. Johnston. 
Alberts, the driver's in, oh what a magnificent goal, George Alberts, a special, well the world didn't need to worry about anything hitting it, because the ball was in the back of the net before they really got themselves into any kind of order. First goal, always vital in a game such as this, can Alberts do it for Rangers? Well there's no doubt about that one, he wasn't going to place it, he wasn't going to miss it, into the corner, and Rangers, one up. Here's Billy Dodds, he's through. Here's Alberts, yes! That does it. You could see it coming as a big German decided right at the end to come up on it and take the net away. Hello, Wallace. Uh, Alberts! Oh, that's a superb strike! So typical of the big German. The Hearts goalkeeper is well aware of the skills of Georges Alberts from the set piece now. Is this the cross or the shot? It's a delicate chip in there. Oh, it's in the back of the net! Georges Alberts. Well, it looks rather bemused. We were expecting a powerful drive in there. And he just chipped it towards the post. And there's a break on here. It's one on one again. Flo against Severin. Hart's trying to get a man back. There's a man over for Rangers. It's George Alberts. Is this number three? It is. 3 1 Rangers. George Alberts. There is absolutely no doubt about it. He's the man of the match. He's dictated everything in this game. But George Alberts does the business for Rangers. 13 minutes gone. Rangers have the lead. to be up here but it was a nice memory for me and it's nice to be home again George you said home you're a German you mean home I mean home yeah